Hey guys, welcome back to the Friday Q&A. Today I'm going to be talking about a topic that since the very beginning of my channel when I first started posting videos on acne and tips for pores and um, what you can do about your pores, I've always gotten many questions about, well, can you address fungal acne? That I've been told I have that and it's harder to treat. Can you please go over it? So that's what I'm going to be addressing in today's Q&A. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Andrea. I am a dermatologist. And I have a YouTube channel here called A Day with Dr. Dre. I share fun vlogs of my life um, and lots of plant-based vegan recipes, as well as skincare product reviews and uh, a skincare Q&A. So if this type of content is of interest to you, um, then I encourage you to subscribe and stick around for more. All right, so fungal acne, what is it? Well, there is a little yeast, okay, that lives on everyone's skin for the most part called pterosperum, also called malassezia. It's the same thing. This yeast is completely benign, part of normal skin flora, but sometimes can get a little bit too comfortable on our skin and cause a variety of skin problems, okay? This yeast is thought to contribute to um, the flares of and the severity of dandruff on the scalp, as well as a um, related condition on the face that I've talked about here at length, seborrheic dermatitis, which is characterized by kind of greasy, red, scaly patches around the sides of the nose, the forehead, um, in the ears, etc. There is also um, a skin condition on the trunk um, oftentimes that happens in people that live in tropical climates called tinea versicolor, okay? It's these like scaly um, brown patches that, that go away and leave behind a light colored spot. Um, worse in the, in the um, hotter, more humid months can kind of go away and then come back. Okay, and then lastly, it causes a condition where the yeast can get a little bit, can get just so comfortable that they, um, you know, kind of trickle down into the pore, into the hair follicle, get really cozy in the oil gland. They're oil loving, by the way. I mean, they really thrive in oil, okay? Um, and so they get really comfortable in the kind of oil bearing surfaces of the skin. <clears throat> and trigger a rash known as pterosperum folliculitis, okay? Or um, if it's on the face, it's oftentimes called, you know, pterosperum uh, folliculitis overlap with acne, and some of you refer to it as fungal acne, okay? Um, and you may have been told that that's what's going on. All right, so um, what, what, does it, what does this condition look like? Well, pterosperum folliculitis, or fungal acne, looks a little bit different than, than classical acne in that it's characterized by little red bumps that are kind of all very uniform in appearance, um, as opposed to the lesions of acne, which can start out uniform in appearance as closed comedones or whiteheads, um, but then different, um, different lesions of acne evolve at different rates. Some become inflammatory cystic nodules, um, you know, some become open comedones, blackheads, so um, whereas fungal acne for the most part stays as this kind of monomorphic red pustule, they all sort of look similar. They have a predilection, just as in other malassezia or pterosperm related skin conditions, they have a predilection for areas on the body that are highest in sebaceous gland density, which would include, you know, your forehead, your nose, um, it can even happen a little bit in your scalp and your back, okay? But who gets malassezia folliculitis or fungal acne, okay? Well, there are actually three to four settings in which we see folliculitis or ac acne-like rashes related to pterosporum. The first is in babies, okay? Baby acne, um, when the baby is first born, babies can have little pimples on their cheeks um, that um, it's just a little baby acne, okay? And it's thought to be related to this yeast because the baby's skin is developing, the baby's immune system is still very naive, and so the yeast is kind of a little bit cozy there, and the baby sometimes gets little pimples. So oftentimes, um, you know, it completely goes away, it doesn't scar the baby, um, it's very common. <clears throat> And um, dermatologists are often called to the nursery to evaluate these lesions. And frequently, um, either nothing is done because, as I said, they'll go away and the baby is fine, 
or if the parents are really um, nervous about it, um, sometimes a little antifungal cream can be rubbed on the cheeks to help it go away a little bit faster. Okay, so that is that is one setting in which we see a fungal acne. The other setting in which we see fungal fungal acne or acne folliculitis is in people who um, are in the hospital, for example, and have been given in the hospital or outside of the hospital and have been given a course of um, oral um, uh, oral immunosuppressive medications or oral prednisone. Prednisone is a steroid that lowers our immune system and sometimes is very, very, very a, a very essential drug in controlling many diseases acutely. Um, but um, when when that drug is on board, um, it lowers the immune system, and as a result, the malassezia can get a little cozy and cause um, something called um, uh, you know almost a drug a drug associated acne or acne eruption related to immunosuppressants, and it's thought to be due to to pterosperm or malassezia. You know, the other group of people that can be plagued with, um, with pterosperm folliculitis on the back, for example, are individuals who have um, diseases that lower the immune system, individuals who, for example, may be on uh, medicines because they have had a organ transplant and they need to be on medicines that lower their immune system so as to not reject the transplanted organ. Those individuals can develop um, pterosperm folliculitis, mostly on the back, okay? But healthy people can get it too, okay? Um, you know, healthy people can be plagued by conditions in the malassezia family, like seborrheic dermatitis, tinea versicolor. So what do you need to know? Well, people who have regular acne, okay, acne that has nothing to do with pterosperum may also be predisposed to developing pterosperum or fungal acne, okay? Because um, <clears throat> the acne is oftentimes treated with um, either oral or topical antibiotics, which are safe and effective and used and are used largely to control the inflammation in the skin that drives acne, um, as well as to kind of help control some of the bacteria named Propionibacterium that also help contribute to, to garden variety acne, okay? Um, and so many times people are prescribed those medications and they alter the, some of the skin flora transiently. And in doing so, make a little bit more room for yeast, okay? People who have acne have higher rates, oftentimes, of oil production. That's part of acne pathogenesis, okay? And in, as a result, if they have a lot of oil and a high rate of oil production or seborrhea, it, it lays, it, it, it fertilizes the garden, so to speak, for more pterosperum uh, productivity and, and activity. Also, and subsequently also developing pterosperum folliculitis or or fungal acne and that can either happen on the face or on the back okay it's actually very different than than the garden variety acne which may also be present on the face at the same time and, or may also be present on the back and chest at the same time so do you understand people with acne um, may develop fungal acne alongside of their acne, either as a result of the treatments that they're on to control the inflammation and some of the bacteria that drive acne, or as a result of the fact that part of the way acne occurs, irrespective of the drugs used to treat it, is by virtue of the fact that it's due to a high rate of oil production. Oil is also very conducive to more tinea, uh, more pterosperum. The more pterosperum and the more pterosperum activity you have, the more likely you are to suffer lesions of fungal acne. For whatever reason in the studies that we have, we don't have very many studies on fungal acne, to be honest with you, and it's something that I think oftentimes actually goes under-recognized, particularly in areas um, where it may not be as prevalent. But in the studies that we do have on fungal, on fungal acne and looking at populations who are plagued with it, Oddly enough, it seems to affect women mostly, but that that's probably a biased observation, and that we know that act, and that we know that women are more likely <clears throat> to see healthcare providers than men. It's just what the data su su suggests. So that's probably a bias, okay? Because men actually have a, a higher rate of oil production, um, but they may stay at home and ignore it <laughs> more so than women. I'm not trying to stereotype anyone. That's just what the data suggests that women come to the doctor um, more readily than men. 
All right, how is fungal acne um, diagnosed or picked up? It's something that the dermatologist, um, it's something that an astute dermatologist can pick up on, but it could be missed, okay? Um, because it can blend in with the rest of your acne and be sort of hard to distinguish. But it's something that should be considered and should be addressed, okay? Um, so like I said, the lesions of, fung of fungal acne tend to be more monomorphic, but you know, if you've got other lesions of, of regular acne going on, it can all kind of start to blend in together and be a little confusing. So <clears throat> one test that the dermatologist can easily, easily do um, in the office is uh, something called a KOH preparation where they can just take a little bit of the um, of the pus from the, the bump and do a special test on it um, right there in in the office and um, they can actually see the little um, malassezia okay so that can kind of help okay or they may sub suspect it without even needing to do that test by virtue of your history and the morphology of, of your acne and, and that sort of thing. So um, a very astute dermatologist can pick it up, um, but do know it may be missed and it's something to, to actually ask about, you know, ask about it. Hey, is, is it possible that pterosperum is playing a role here in my acne? Is that something that we should be targeting? Always ask, okay? You know, you're not gonna look stupid, okay? <laughs> Don't worry about looking stupid ever, okay? <laughs> Probably one of the most effective uh, treatments for for this is um, an oral antifungal medication, um, but do know that that doesn't tend to cure it, okay? It can come back because the yeast is part of our normal skin flora, okay? So if, if it's treated, it clears up, and then um, the conditions that are conducive to the yeast getting active again come back, um, then, then he'll flare. So what are those types of conditions? Well, hot, sweaty environments for the, for the most part. So, you know, um, make sure that you avoid, one thing you can do is avoid wearing um, clothing that is really tight or occlusive. Make sure you wear fabrics that breathe readily. One um, skin practice that you should avoid, however, is the use of oils. Um, and by oils, I mean things like olive oil or rosehip oil or really any plant oil as moisturizers because malassezia or pterosperum, whatever you want to call them, is an oil-loving yeast that thrives in these oils. So putting oils directly on the skin and leaving them there is, like, is going to worsen the skin problem. Okay, um, and not all oils and moisturizers are necessarily bad. I'll list some oil-free moisturizers down below that I happen to be a fan of and that I think are good to use um, with this condition, but it, do know that um, you know putting oils on the skin will likely worsen, worsen, the, uh, worsen the problem for you by virtue of the fact that the yeast is oil-loving, okay? The other thing that you should um, uh, consider doing is um, one thing that can be helpful in just kind of cutting down and controlling the amount of the yeast on the skin. And this goes for any, any pterosperm related disease, whether it be dandruff, whether it be seborrheic dermatitis, whether it be tinea versicolor, or whether it be uh, fungal acne slash um, pterosperm folliculitis, is using an anti-dandruff shampoo that contains the ingredient zinc pyrithione. Um, I will list some down below. You know, I'm here in the United States, the, the popular brand name one is Head and Shoulders. But honestly, guys, you know, you can get the generic version of that. You don't need to buy exclusively head and shoulders like the Equate version of it at Walmart. It's just as good. You just need zinc pyrithione, okay? And the way to use it is to lather it onto the affected areas in the shower, um, you know, nightly when you're having a bout of, of the problem, every night. Let it sit on the skin for, you know, five or six minutes or so, give or take, and then rinse it off, okay? <clears throat> do it nightly while you're battling it, and then when things get better, make sure you continue to do it at least a few nights a week as maintenance, okay? So that is one proactive thing that you, the sufferer with a pterosperum-related skin disease, whether it be seb seborrheic dermatitis, dandruff, tinea versicolor, or fungal acne, that's something proactive that you can do. 
Um, you know, there are a variety of prescriptions that may be given to you that can also help control this condition quite effectively. I mentioned the oral antifungals, which can be helpful, but also a antifungal cream containing the ingredient ketoconazole may be prescribed, and that should be used as directed by your physician in a similar manner to those affected areas. It can be very effective, okay? It is safe. Like I said, we often give it to, to newborn babies with, with fungal acne, so it's very safe. Um, I say it's very safe because um, the oral medication, oral ketoconazole, used to be used quite readily to treat this and was pretty effective. However, recently um, there is data to suggest that oral ketoconazole has some potentially dangerous side effects to the liver and therefore it is no longer prescribed for this condition. Um, this medication is also available in a shampoo called Nizorol Shampoo. Um, that is also effective, particularly for dandruff, but could be used as a face wash, just as the Head and Shoulders Shampoo. And then <clears throat> another ingredient that can also be helpful in cutting down on malassezia is sulfur-containing things, um, whether they be uh, uh, like a sulfur mask, for example, or a, um, a sulfur wash. I can list some down below. Um, I caution you if you have rosacea, though, as some of them can be, uh, some of them can have a lot of fragrance in them, and that can um, irritate the rosacea a little bit. Um, but the fragrance is added because sulfur smells like eggs, and nobody likes that. But it too can be quite effective. Okay, so that's how it's controlled um, with medications. But you, the sufferer, need to be proactive with at least an anti-dandruff shampoo as maintenance, and also keeping your skin cool and, um, you know, particularly in those hot, humid climates. Um, rinsing the skin of sweat after a workout can be helpful. Do not hang out in sweaty workout clothes that um, kind of occlude sweat and body oils to the skin. This can worsen it as well. And the other thing that I will also mention that seems to exacerbate fungal acne um, that you should probably bring to the attention of your treating physician for sure is if you're taking any um, uh, testosterone. Men, men who take testosterone supplements uh, can have uh, recalcitrant bouts of, of uh, fungal acne uh, because um, testosterone drives oil production so it can really um, make make for, for, it really can make the pitorosterone quite happy and comfortable. So if you're taking a testosterone supplement, be sure you tell your treating healthcare provider. I mean, you should always disclose that kind of thing, but do be aware that that also can um, contribute to flares and worsening of fungal acne. Yeah. Fungal acne is a really difficult condition to live with because like I said, I mean, in people with acne, it, it can occur concomitantly with the acne and really be kind of hidden in there and very tricky and make it very difficult um, for your, your overall acne to get better. And it, it seems like your overall acne is not responding well to the treatments. Those are kind of clues that this might be going on, okay? So um, be proactive, you guys. Be really proactive. Never be afraid to ask questions of your your physician um, and to be an informed patient that that's that's actually every physician's dream uh, you know physicians love to hear questions healthcare providers love to hear questions I don't mean to just say physicians you know your nurse practitioner ask questions okay don't fear looking stupid ever okay don't don't fear what what the the provider is going to think of you okay it doesn't matter you need to be informed and um, you know it's your health it's your skin it's your overall well-being and honestly we, won't, we really really want you to ask those kinds of questions Questions, okay, um, I hope this video was helpful in kind of clarifying some of the ambiguity of the skin condition and um, The tips were helpful. Like I said, I will list um, some of these products down below in the description box some moisturizers that are Seem to be okay to continue using um, in fungal acne and don't have the kind of oils that exacerbate it um, as well as some <clears throat> anti-dandruff shampoos that can be helpful. So if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys in my next Q&A.